Hey, first of all, I want to thank you guys for your continued support on my channel. I also want to thank you for your amazing feedback on one of my previous episodes about the cinematic lighting techniques. And because it was so successful, I thought I'd just create a part two of that. So in today's video, we will be talking about more cinematic lighting, chiaroscuro lighting techniques, film noir. Hello everyone and welcome along to another episode of Cinematic Lighting Techniques. In episode 6 or 9 today, we will be focusing more about uh, chiaroscuro lighting techniques from or developed or invented from Leonardo da Vinci. And we will be also going about, uh, about film noir. So we will just pretty much catch up what we did in my previous. So we'll be looking at two reference images and we just try to recreate them using very basic lighting techniques. Before we jump in, I want to thank my sponsor who supplied me with today's model, which is James Spader. And it was modeled by Dennis Brown Gasson. I hope I pronounced his name correctly. Um, have a look at his ArtStation account. He has some cool models up there as well. So thanks again for uh, providing me that model. And if you have interesting high quality models as well, feel free to uh, send them to me and I will be featuring them in my upcoming videos. And now let's jump into Maya and have some fun with some new lighting techniques. So as you can see now, I have a selection of, um, of reference images and I, and I think we will be first starting with this guy down here. Because we have a hat as well in the model, I'm trying to recreate just similar lighting ideas. And you can see there is a pretty strong key light coming from the left. And then there is some kind of fill light which helps um, fill in the shadows on his shadow side. And then for my second idea, I want to go for this as super chiaroscuro lighting. It's like high contrast, like one strong key, one strong rim. You don't really know where the main direction is coming from. And this is a very interesting effect. It's super eerie and mis mysterious, right? So we're just trying to recreate these two, these two lighting setups. Back in Maya, I already have a little camera. So we have uh, camera two and we have camera run and we will be starting with camera one. So as you can see, I don't have any lights in the scene um, and we have this guy as a reference. So I think the first thing we like to do is just match the key lighting direction and it's, it's very straightforward. We will be using an area light. We make it a bit smaller so we get some harsher shadows because you can see it's super strong, super hard shadows here. And then uh, we will be placing that and then we continue filling it in, maybe adding some fill lights and we just see uh, what we get. All right, so render is started. So we have no lights in the scene. So let's head over to our menu and create a light. So let's use an area light and you can follow along with any render engine. Um, so it's nothing crazy, just create a light and go to the settings of that light and increase its exposure. Right now we are in 15. I have a very basic shade on my object. It's just a gray, 50%, uh, like a neutral gray uh, color. And I just want to move the light to a better distance so it's more physical and accurate. So it's right now almost like I would say two meters away. We can make it a bit larger. We, you can already see the reflection in his, uh, in his, in his glasses. Uh, let's just boost the exposure somewhat, maybe 18. And then maybe use a look through selected. And then just uh, first let's frame him so we have the center of interest uh, framed. And then we can just move out and we can place it as we want. So. I think this light is pretty much coming f directly from the left. It's not facing upwards or anything. So we just need to make sure that we do not cast a shadow over his eyes because this would be, I think, killing the look. So we definitely want to have some highlight in his eyes. So you can see now we are just shadowing his eyes. Move it up a bit. So there's just some light in his eyes. And you can see we're almost there. Let's just go slightly more. And then right now we are on the tip of his nose. We want to move the light a bit more around. So it's just not catching his, his uh, right side. And you can see it goes over the lips. But we don't want any light here on, on this cheek thing here. So let's just go back a slight amount. And then let's just boost the light a bit more. And uh, go to perspective camera and select your light source attribute editor and just boost it up somewhat. And I think right now my light size is just too large. We get these soft shadows everywhere. So I'm just scaling the light source down somewhat. 
so we get nice and hard harsh shadows you can see we get pretty much the same kind of reach of that light source it goes just uh, briefly on his nose um, because we just have that one light source it's super contrasty and we don't read his face much and in the reference here you can see there's definitely something filled in to uh, give, give some nice uh, detail in it on his shadow side so what we can do for that is we like i think on, on set they just use a little bounce card or something just to reflect some light up in his face we can do the same by just creating another area light making it larger like that uh, maybe not so large but let's just move it first and then we see what we get something like this i'm pretty sure this is way too large um, and then just scale it back down and increase the exposure maybe to 12 or 15 you can already see it's being filled in slightly like that and let's see what we can do um, there's no light really underneath his head so i think it's not an up light we just look through this again and just move it up slightly let's frame him first so we can actually have a nice point of interest based on the distance you can also change the exposure just by moving the light distance you can control the light exposure so the further away the less intensity reaches your object and the closer obviously the harder it gets we are pretty close we have the same kind of the same kind of shadow here i think we are a bit too front lit so let's just go over somewhat because I want to retain to I want to retain the shape. So if I would be more front lit, the head would be super flat. If I move it a bit to the side, you can see that um, we get some nice shaping on the head now, which is very cool. Um, we are a bit much to the side because we don't see his face, and just slightly move it in. And I think this already is a good example of just uh, replicating this light. Okay, cool. So the first lighting setup is replicated. Um, obviously, it's not the same because the, the, the posture and everything is not exactly the same. But I think it's time to just go on the more contrasty looking one and see how we how I do that. So let's jump right back into Maya. All right, so let's just try to replicate this guy here. It's similar in terms of the two lights. So we have one key and we have a rim in this, this sense that well, there is no rim actually. So uh, let's just do this then. So First of all, let's create this strong key light. I'm just hiding the other lights and create a new area light. Go to lights, area light, and let's just do look through selected directly and zoom out a bit, hit him and do a hit F to frame his selection. So now you have, you are able to rotate it nicely around him. Head over to the attributes and increase the exposure to get more light on him like that. We have right now a very small light source, so we might be good. So what we want to do now is first change our camera, um, the render camera to our second camera view, which is this more front lit, uh, front facing camera, and then go back to the light. And now let's place it. So you can see that the shadow of his hat is casting a nice um, diagonal shadow over his face. So I just want to make sure that I'm replicating this. All right, so we want to go a bit higher. And the light is actually going around quite a bit. It's hitting up till his middle of the of his face again. So pretty close to what I have right now. I just think we can go a bit higher. So we cover a bit more of his nose. Something like that, maybe. We get the same nice shadowing there. All right, so now let's just uh, increase the exposure somewhat. And maybe we need to increase the lights some. Well, it's actually a pretty crisp shadow, so maybe just go, go back. So we get a nicer sharp shadow here. So this would be now the key direction. So the next step would be to get this strong rim and we just create another area light object. So let's go back to area lights and now let's frame him again. Look through selected and frame the geo. And then we just go back on like more backlit, something more like this I would say is, is appropriate for this guy. And then again, select the light source, boost up the exposure, maybe go back to 16 stops. It's a bit much, so we can just go back in distance 
and just uh, go up slightly. So I'm just looking at the angle here and I just want to make sure that we just hit it underneath his chin. Um, but it's just stopping before his eye socket there. All right, so I think this is actually pretty close. I just need to stop down, it's way too bright. I think this now is a pretty good match to the overall look of the reference image. What I like to do now, like especially if you do VFX work, um, you, you always don't want to have a super high contrast, you always want to see some kind of shaping. So what I then like to do is just create another light. And as we did before, we just fill it in slightly. So let's just look through our area light number five, which we just used to fill in the shadow side some little amount, so nothing too crazy. Let's go back to eight, maybe 10, 15. Yeah, so very subtle. You can see now we have a really soft lighting here um, and we just make make sure that we have soft shadows as well. So I'm just scaling up the light source so it's not overpowering at all. And it's just very faintly filling in his light, uh, his face. So this is um, before that fill light and after the fill light. So you can see it's now a lot nicer to read his face. If you want to be more mysterious, obviously you just want to dial that back down. But essentially this is a pretty cool effect, I think. So now let's just, uh, maybe what helps as well is if you want to change with light color somewhat, and it's always good to have some warm, co uh, cool lighting. So what we can do is just colorize the key light, maybe maybe not red. Oh, why not actually? Why not do like a crazy red color? As if he's like, I don't know, in a nightclub or whatever. You know, you don't know where these guys go, right? So. Um, and the backlight here, let's make this some kind of cyan or teal blue. I like the teal actually. Yeah. All right, so now do we want to have more color? No, I don't think so. Can just boost the fill slightly. And if you want to do like just some, some kind of more atmospheric effect, uh, what we can do is we can introduce um, called something called volume scattering. It's, it's just kind of like particles in the air, which gives you some nice kind of um, beams or direction lights. So in the render settings for Arnold, at least for Maya, it is you go to environment, atmosphere, and you create an um, AI atmosphere volume. And on default, I think the density is set to zero, so you will not see anything on default. Um, so if I bring in density, you can see everything gets like really foggy very fast. So you want to play down with the density, like keep it super low. And you can already see now by having a very low density that we get this nice volumetric lighting here. And you can also specify how much each light contributes to this. Um, so there is this, uh, where is it, volume here. And you can see now by reducing that only this, only the red light is contributing to that. But I think we want both a bit. Uh, what we also want to do is maybe angle the light distribution. So on default, it's going in all directions and you can just make it like almost like a spotlight. So by reducing the spread, you can see the light intensity, intensity gets stronger, um, but we also beam the light, which is great. So obviously we don't want to go as directional, maybe something like that, and then reduce the exposure. Um, Let's see what we can do. Bring up the volume again. We don't wanna to go too crazy. So now by reducing this, I think we can go um, up in the density of the overall scattering effect. So let's just do some um, spreading here. So our spread angle is a bit less. So it's more focused, something like that. And then reduce the exposure again. until you have a nice looking lighting. And then you go back to your render settings and select the atmosphere volume. And in here again, you now can increase the density. Don't go too crazy. That is too much. 
we don't want this to be contributing so make sure that your fill light is not enabled for this there we go and there you go so now you can see that with basic lighting techniques you get this look with a bit more polishing up you can definitely have a very interesting lighting technique and imagine you have some hair on him and you see his beard in, in the light here so you can definitely do so much by just working on your lights spending more time than usual on lighting techniques or lighting setups will uh, go, bring you or get you a long way for sure I hope you like the second edition of the cinematic lighting techniques where I was showing you two different uh, styles to recreate um, very nice moody or like contrasty interesting lighting techniques and this one was a bit special because of the chiaroscuro lighting and with the red and blue is definitely a nice touch to this so um, I hope you like this episode again and if you like what I do please leave me a thumbs up and if you have any questions or feedback please uh, say something below in the comment section it would help me and all the other guys on YouTube as well. So thank you guys again for tuning in and I will see you in the next episode.